Welcome to worship this morning. It's a blessing to have you take part in this online service as we worship. Thanks to our musicians and uh, Parker for the Spark Bible reading, reminding us of the special prayer that Jesus taught us. We also thank Scott Swartz for taping, editing, and publishing this morning's service. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. The disciples had seen Jesus do amazing things, heal the sick, teach in the temple, and pray to God. They wanted to learn everything they could from Jesus. Teach us to pray, they said to Jesus. Out of all the things Jesus did, they thought this was most important. When you pray, Jesus said, don't be like the people who stand on the street and use big words, loud voices, and long prayers. Find a place where you can be alone when you think only about God. A reading from Romans, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. We are no longer enemies, but we have peace with God because we were brought into a right relationship with God through Christ's death. The reading begins. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but also we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, 
Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, for the, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps a good person might actually have someone dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of our Lord. The gospel for this morning is from Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning with the 35th verse. The mission of Jesus' followers is to continue the mission of Jesus himself. Here he instructs his first disciples as to how they might proclaim the gospel through word and deed. The gospel reads, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and every sickness. When when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over the unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve disciples. First, Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment." the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather this morning, we give thanks for your word, for Jesus who has sent out disciples to proclaim your message, and that as he sends us out as disciples in this time, help us to proclaim your love, the good news of the gospel, the joy of following Jesus. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. This has been a time of soul searching for our country. Where are we going as a nation? What are the shifts or the changes in priorities that are happening? How did we get here in the first place? It it seems that recent events have triggered deep emotions that really should have been dealt with many years ago. If we are a country that values each individual as equal, then we need to follow our ideals and our beliefs. Certainly our Christian faith values all people as equal and precious in God's eyes. Our text from Romans 5 boldly proclaims that since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. 
And while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The strife and the rotten relationship between humans and God because of sin has been healed. We are made right. We are put into a positive relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We're forgiven of our sins, those sins that plague us so deeply. We're changed. We're made new in the waters of baptism to live as redeemed people of God. Sin is what separates us from God. Sin keeps us from loving God and others as God would have us love each other. It's like a great chasm, such as in the parable that Jesus told of poor Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus died and went to heaven, consoled by Abraham, and the rich man went to the eternal abyss, where he begged for help. Between them was a great chasm that could not be overcome. Sin. By faith in Jesus Christ, we have been made right with God. The chasm is overcome. Not by us, but by the sacrifice of Jesus. This is the peace that Paul is writing about in Romans 5. We can't achieve this peace, this access to the grace of God. We can only receive it. So as followers of Jesus Christ, justified by faith, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, How will we respond? How will we accept the free gift of grace? And what will our responses be? What kind of Christians are we? What kind of a church? What kind of the people of God in Christ will we be? How can we take the dark time that our nation is undergoing and be people of light, people who spread the love and peace of Jesus, the light of the world. Can we continue through this time of COVID pandemic, continuing to keep the best interests of our sisters and brothers in Christ in mind? Can we share Christ's love in ways that will disarm show kindness, and bring healing to our nation? There's a lot of anger, resentment, and hurt on all sides of the issues plaguing the death of George Floyd. People are responding in unhealthy ways, going overboard one way or another, and we're treating one another with disrespect and anger. That's not the way Christ taught us. And that's not the peace that Paul writes about in Romans 5. But really, isn't it hard to do that? We keep trying to solve our own problems, to make our own rules and do our own things. And so we don't accept the grace that God provides. There's an old story that was told by Reverend Dr. Tony Campolo, a pastor, teacher, professor, and a youth guru from a few years ago. He spoke at one of our national youth gatherings that I attended with some of our youth and really made an impression on me. He has a way with stories, and I think sometimes he may even embellish them a bit. Dr. Campolo told a story one time about Uh, a time when he was asked to speak at a conference in Hawaii. It took a while for his body to catch up from the move across five time zones. And the first night in his hotel, 
His internal clock had him wide awake at three o'clock in the morning and his stomach was growling for attention. Tony wandered the quiet streets of Honolulu looking for a place to find fried eggs and bacon. All the respectable places were closed and he finally ended up in a greasy dive in a narrow, dimly lit alley. The, pe- the place reaped with grunge. He was afraid to touch the menu for fear that it would stick to his fingers and that if he opened it, something with far too many legs might crawl out. Suddenly, Tony wasn't quite as hungry, no matter how much his stomach protested. He saw a stack of donuts on the shelf under a cl- cracked plastic cover. I'll have a coffee and a donut, he said. The guy poured a cup of dark, thick coffee, and then he wiped his greasy hand on his dirty apron, grabbed a donut with his fingers, and tossed it onto the counter in front of Tony. There he sat, 3.30 in the morning, gagging on sour coffee, and a stale donut. All at once, the door slammed open, and eight or nine prostitutes sauntered in. The joint was small, and when the women crowded into the counter, they surrounded Tony. They were swearing, smoking, gossiping, and another bite, and a gulp, and Tony would be gone. Something stopped his exit when a woman who, tur- who was stood next to him turned to her friend and said, with a faraway look in her eye, you know what? Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to be 39. That got Tony thinking. L- later, he asked the owner if he, if he knew the woman who stood next to him. Sure, that's Agnes. She's been coming here for years. Comes every night about this time. Tony countered, well, she just said that it was her birthday tomorrow. What do you think? Do you think that you and I could do something about that? Maybe throw her a birthday party right here tomorrow night. Man got a cute smile on his chubby cheeks. That's a great idea, he said. So they made their plans. At 2.30 the next morning, Tony was back. He brought a crepe paper decorations and a fold-out sign that said, Happy birthday, Agnes. By 3 o'clock, the diner was looking pretty good. And by 3.15, it was crowded wall-to-wall with prostitutes. At 3.30, Agnes and her group walked in. Tony had everyone ready to shout, Happy birthday, Agnes! She was flabbergasted. Her mouth fell open. She put her hands to her head and she almost fell over stunned. Her friend grabbed her by the arm and led her to the counter where her birthday cake rested on a pedestal. Tony led the room in an energetic chorus of happy birthday. Agnes began to cry. She saw the cake with all the candles and wept. She composed herself and after a minute or two blew the candles out. Cut the cake, Agnes, they yelled. Cut the cake. But Agnes looked down at the cake and without taking her eyes off it said to Harry, look, Harry, Would it be all right if I, I mean, is it okay if I, what I mean is, do you think it would be okay if, if I just kept the cake for a little while? Is it okay if I don't eat it right away? Harry didn't know what to say. He shrugged his shoulders and he said, well, sure, if that's what you want, take it home if you want to. 
Agnes turned to Tony and she asked, Is it okay? I, I just live down the street. Can I take the cake home for a minute? I'll be right back, honest. Agnes picked up her cake like it was the Holy Grail and she promenaded through the room. She carried her treasure out the door and down the street with everyone watching in stunned silence. When she had gone, nobody seemed to know what to do next. So Tony got up on a chair and he said, What do you say we pray? There they were. Together in a hole in the wall, greasy spoon, prostitutes on Honolulu's busy streets, 3.30 in the morning, and Tony wanted them to pray. Later, he said it was one of those, jeez, I can't believe I did that moments. But Tony prayed for Agnes. He prayed for her life. He prayed for her health. He prayed for her soul and her relationship with God. And when Tony finished praying, Harry leaned over the counter and said accusingly, Hey, you never told me you was a preacher. What kind of a church do you belong to anyhow? Tony replied, I belong to a church that throws parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. Harry thought about that a moment, and then he replied, Nah, you don't. There ain't no church like that. If there was, I'd join it myself. Yes, sir, I'd be a member of a church like that. Would you be a member of a church like that? Could that really be what Jesus was asking Tony to do? How can we be a church and follow Jesus' call to serve people who feel disenfranchised and outcast today? Where is Jesus leading you to serve others? St. Paul said, But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercy and grace are overwhelming. We give thanks for the grace freely given us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Help us to live in the new life that Christ gave us and bless us with a renewal of mind, body, and spirit as we struggle to make sense of the disturbing events of the past few weeks. Forgive us, lead us in your ways, and help us to come to you. Remind us of how to love and care for one another. Bless our nation as we deal with so many divisive and difficult issues. Bring us together in your love. Heal our anger and our selfish ways. Let us look to you for strength, wisdom, and hope as we deal with the coronavirus and our social issues. Instill in our leaders the ability to see both sides of issues, to work together, to hold all people as precious and equal. God, we come before you asking for your forgiveness in our personal lives. Give us insight into our own sin and let your Holy Spirit lead us to repentance. We take this moment to share with you our private thoughts. Remind us of the grace of Christ, which overcomes and forgives. We praise you for Jesus and his sacrifice for us. Be with those who are dealing with health concerns. Grant healing to all who face surgery or illnesses. And be with those who are waiting for transplant. Give strength to those dealing with addictions, that your grace may overwhelm and fill them all. We remember those dear to us in our hearts at this time. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us in your amazing grace. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.
forever within your house forever